Almost 10 years ago, me and my family were living on a street called Eagle Drive. We had lived in this house for about 6 years when we began to notice things. Strange things. It was bizarre instances like a flickering street light, the sound of footsteps pedaling down the road when no one was there, and dark red eyes appearing around our yard in the dead of night. Yet the moment I realized that what I was dealing with was really serious was when I saw an ominous and shadowy figure standing under the street light down the street. What I did know was that this wasn't a person. This was the Hat Man. Before I tell you the full story, I first want to welcome you to the channel. I hope that you're having an awesome day in the Lord. And if you like this video or any of our other content, then would you please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It's completely free, but it helps us continue spreading the gospel message of the kingdom and letting everyone know how awesome our Lord and Savior is. Getting back into the story, I want to preface this by clarifying a few things. First is that this is all a 100% true account and my personal testimony. As crazy as some of this stuff may sound, I promise you, it all happened. I also want to point out that all of these things happened during a time in my life when I wasn't a full-fledged Christian. I might have even been considered agnostic. I had a very limited knowledge of God and the Bible. I didn't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and I didn't know much about Scripture. I was skeptical and not religious in the slightest. So randomly one day, I began to experience a handful of unexplainable events that definitely exposed me to the world of spiritual warfare. This is why I've been an avid proponent of telling people that demons and the devil don't just target Christians. They attack people who don't even believe or know that they are real. The very first thing that happened to me when it comes to the spirit world or supernatural occurrences came one afternoon when I arrived home. I specifically remember that it was a Thursday because I was looking forward to the weekend. After we went grocery shopping for dinner that night, we walked inside the house and I sat at my usual spot on the couch. Everyone else went off doing their own thing, so I was sitting there in the living room, watching TV, alone. As I sat there, this thought randomly began to form in my mind of someone standing under the streetlight about three houses down from mine. I knew that it was the street we lived on because I recognized the houses and the specific streetlight. What I didn't recognize though, or I should say who I didn't recognize, was the person that was standing there. I couldn't make out exact details because it was more of a silhouette of the figure. This individual looked like a tall man, wearing a trench coat and a wide brim hat. Thinking it was just my imagination, I shrugged it off and forgot all about it. And I didn't think about it again until the vision randomly came into my thoughts a second time the following night. And it was about 7 or 8 at night, and I just remember thinking to myself, what is going on here? Is my mind playing tricks on me? This is when I decided to tell someone about my repeated vision, just to kind of get it out there and make sense of it. So I went to my best friend and the woman I cherish most in life, Joe. We walked outside and sat on the driveway, which was our usual routine. The conversation started out formal. We asked how each other's day was and other small talk. But before I could get to telling her about my vision, it looked like Joe wanted to say something too. I could just tell by the look on her face that she was uneasy about something. So I kept bugging her and pressing her until she finally cracked. You'll think I'm crazy, she said with a laugh. No, I won't, I replied. Joe then proceeded to explain something that sounded eerily familiar. I keep seeing something out of the corner of my eye, she confessed. Intrigued by this, my ears perked up. I keep seeing someone standing down there under the light, Joe said, pointing toward the street light a few houses down from ours. Before she could continue, I cut her off. Is it wearing a top hat and a long coat, I asked her. Shocked, Joe's eyes grew wide. She was stunned that I had accurately described this ominous figure that she had been seeing. Little did she know that I had been seeing it too. So I explained my dilemma with my vision of this thing. We were both beyond words. This wasn't a coincidence, this was a shared incident. We didn't know who or what this was, and even though we talked about it for the next few days, we didn't land on a definitive explanation. A few weeks passed by, and the unusual situation basically just went to the back of our minds. It wasn't until a neighbor of ours died that we started to piece things together. I'm not going to give out names or the identities of these people, but we had a next door neighbor who had an accident and passed away a few weeks later. It was exactly one month after this that another neighbor of ours in the cul-de-sac down the street suddenly passed away as well. Around the time these deaths occurred, a neighbor of ours across the street who was a preacher started packing up and moved away. When we asked her why, she said it was because the neighborhood was too demonic and she kept getting spiritually attacked. Once these deaths happened back to back, me and Joe started to brainstorm because it was just too freaky and coincidental for this to not be connected. So we both went back to this dark, ghostly figure we had seen a couple of months prior and started thinking that maybe this has something to do with that. Once we considered all aspects of what happened and honed in on the spiritual aspect of it, we were more than certain that we had identified who we were dealing with. A spirit of death. 
I'm not talking about the Grim Reaper, and I'm not talking about an unbiased spirit who comes to collect souls. No, this was indeed demonic and dark, and it radiated a heavy presence that was super oppressive. It wasn't until years later, actually a few months ago, that I was here on YouTube watching a channel called The Y Files when I came across a video that talked about the Hat Man. When I listened to the stories in the Y Files video, and I heard the various theories of this figure, I knew for a fact that this was the same thing me and Joe had seen all those years ago. While it has been called the Hat Man, I don't think we need to call this entity the Hat Man because I am 100% sure that this is a demonic spirit of death. I come from a Christian perspective when I see things out in the world that are extraordinary or unable to be explained. Where most people aren't able to discern or accept that a so-called ghost, apparition, or anything else is spiritual in nature, Christians should be able to easily identify what's of God and what's of the enemy. The Hat Man is included. Now the rest of our story takes a sharp turn because a short time after the next door neighbor and the neighbor in the cul-de-sac died, things got closer to home. Like literally in our home. Joe began to get very sick and she was having to have surgeries every few months to treat her illness. It was just a really bad time. Me and Joe had really gotten depressed. The family was struggling financially. Joe's health was in jeopardy. Things just seemed really bleak and hopeless. Not to sound too dramatic, but Joe honestly thought that she would be the next one to die. One night when we were sitting in the living room watching TV, Joe said to me, we're never going to make it out of here, are we? That statement lit a fire under me that caused me to kick it in high gear and do all I could to get the family out of that house. God is good and we managed to find a place across town to rent and we left the demonic things in that neighborhood behind. The episodes of spiritual warfare that we endured during our time in Eagle Drive will never be forgotten. It's what opened my eyes to the fact that angels and demons are real. Of course it was scary, but it was something I felt God revealed to me and had us go through so that I could share my testimony and let everyone know what's out there. This stuff is real and it is our job as Christians to know what we're up against and how to defend ourselves against the enemy. At the time that all this happened, I wasn't a prayer warrior and I didn't know the things that I know now. If I had, it probably wouldn't have been as bad. Thank God for his grace and protection. All in all, my advice is to read God's word, learn how to pray, and always keep Jesus in your heart. If you see something like a hat man, a ghost, a demon, or anything else, believers have the authority in Christ to trail on serpents and scorpions and pray those things away. Don't be scared, intimidated, or fooled by them. Make them obey to the authority of Christ. Thank you for tuning into this video. If you don't mind, I ask that you please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video with family and friends, and let me know if you've had a similar experience in the comments below. Also be sure to check out my latest book, Wars and Rumors of Wars, over on Amazon, where I go through and give a full timeline of events of what will happen during the end times. As always, keep fighting the good fight of faith, and have a blessed day.